Hey, it's me. Valorant, an intense social deduction game. I like precious little boys. What am I listening to? Now, if I'm honest, Valorant is not the game it used to be. With lacking content updates and mediocre battle passes, it's pretty easy to see the decline it's been on. You could even say it's had a recent fall. But that's just it. Fall damage, an integral yet vastly underutilized mechanic. I mean, I even tried looking it up on the wiki and pretty much nothing came up. But despite that, the player base seems to be desperate for it. Does this game make you want to jump off high objects? Yes. Yep. Yes, daddy. So today we're finally giving the people what they've asked for. for. Every map, every location, and every minute detail. This is the ultimate guide to fall damage. Let's start with something the wiki actually does get right. Eight meters is the threshold for taking fall damage. Falling from this height will get you 15 damage and even a meter less won't get you any. Now realistically, these values are from the top of your head and with the player character being two meters tall, it's more like six meters, but for simplicity's sake, we'll just say eight. A good way of visualizing it is this spot on Icebox, which when Crouch jumped off the top of, barely meets the eight meter requirement. For every meter traveled, you'll also take more damage, which caps out at 17 meters where you'll take a lethal 100. However, gamers, don't know why I said that. Fall damage is linked to the distance you travel, not the speed you're going. So a fall like this one on ascent is still absolutely gonna kill me despite me gracefully gliding towards the ground. You can even take fall damage before the round even starts, and there's nothing stopping you from just killing yourself. And finally, here's a list of all the different abilities that interact with fall damage. Just drink that all up. Do you remember 30 seconds ago when I said the damage scales with the distance? Well, it's kind of weird. Uh, it does so really precisely. So precise, in fact, that you can take decimal points of damage. I'm not entirely sure the applicability of this knowledge, but this spot on Bind really showcases it perfectly. The first time I jump, I take 15 damage but when I follow it up with another one, I take 16. Presumably because I'm taking like 15.6 damage and it's just not displaying it properly on the HUD, uh, but I digress. I didn't really consider this important enough to put into the rest of the video, so if I ever show you damage numbers on the screen, just assume they're close enough. Did you know that fall damage can heal you? Well, with the use of revive abilities like Clove or Sage Ult, it actually can. <laughs> now, obviously it doesn't make a lot of sense to burn a revive for a heal when you could have just, you know, taken your next fight with a revive in your pocket, especially on two characters who already have base kit heals. But what if I told you there was a really niche situation where it did make sense to do this? Full damage penetrates armor. So no matter how much armor you have, it will always go straight through it. And if you abuse this fact, you can actually revive yourself with armor remaining. Let's say you're playing Clove and you've lost a lot of health but still have some shields remaining. Well, in this situation it can actually make sense to just kill yourself in order to get the heal. And maybe that little bit of extra health will be the deciding factor in your next fight. No, you just hit me. You didn't hit I'm me! I'm bad, okay? <laughs> Die! Because who knows, maybe that next fight you'll survive on a sliver of HP that you wouldn't have otherwise. Surprisingly, this tech is actually most applicable on KO of all characters. Because of the nature of his ultimate, all you really need is a friend with you and you can receive a full health reset, pretty much free of charge. It's also important to note that dying to full damage will give you an ult charge as long as someone's already shot you. This coupled with a clutch sage revive could totally provide you with an early ult, maybe even win you around that you wouldn't have otherwise. It functions pretty much the exact same as dying to the spike. I think my game could crash. <laughs> oh my god! And finally, if there's a particularly scary opponent on the other team, there's no shame in jumping to deny them a potential alt orb, or any additional RR for killing you if god forbid you're choosing to do this in ranked. Location is important, because knowing a lay of the land will show you where to land. In another video I'll be doing a deep dive on every map, but I might as well go over the basics here. A fall damage location is a ledge which you can jump off in order to take damage. Pretty simple, right? So here's what's not a full damage location. 
Anywhere that requires you to gain additional height in order to take damage is illegal. It's a bit confusing, but I'll try and simplify it. If a location is inaccessible without the use of an ability, it's not automatically disqualified. But if once you're up there, you still need to use your util in order to take damage, then it's illegal. Unacceptable. This means no sage walls, updrafts, satchels, or speed boosts of any kind. As a rule of thumb, if you can teleport up there as omen or chamber and still take damage, then it's all good. Acceptable. To cap things off, I'll give you some fun little stats that I found from my hours of testing. <laughs> the most damaging location in the entire game are the two Toblerones on Breeze, which will both yield you 60 damage if you crouch jump off the top. The most damaging character independent location goes to this spot on Haven and this spot on Icebox, which will both yield you an impressive 27. Icebox also wins the prize for the most total locations of any map, with an astonishing 16, beating Ascent and Breeze by a landslide. And finally, the map with the fewest locations is Sunset, which somehow is entirely impossible to take full damage on. Poor Sunset. So yeah, that's about it. If you're interested, there'll be a second video coming out with this one, which is a live commentary of every map. It's going to be linked in the description, and whilst you're down there, why not subscribe? I'm planning on beating Mr. Beast to 1 billion subscribers, and every little bit helps. So, anyways, thank you to all my Patreons listed on the side, and extra special thanks to Luna, who helped me with all of my testing and my shots, and without him, this video would have been entirely impossible, so I want to see at least three comments thanking him for his hard work. Luna, can you come over and open the door? Which one? The one on B side, please. I didn't need you to do that, I just wanted to see you running around. <laughs> Thank you, Luna, for tolerating me for so long. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Godspeed.